from the shipwreck that you never heard of at the end of the Civil War to the catastrophic German disaster in World War II, here are nine of the biggest shipwrecks of all time. Number nine, MS Estonia. This shipwreck actually occurred quite recently in 1994. What happened? It was crossing with almost 1,000 people from Tallinn, Estonia to Stockholm, Sweden. This was late summer, and the cruise ship was a bit lopsided with its load, sitting a little uneven on the water. That meant that it was extra vulnerable to the harsh weather conditions that began with a summer storm, including high winds and 16-foot waves. A particularly nasty wave broke off part of the front doors of the boat. More heavy waves separated off part of the remaining trim, and water began rushing in. In about half an hour, the ship totally turned on its side. It sank about 250 feet underneath the Baltic Sea. 852 people perished, and of the people who survived, most of them were the strongest, toughest, most resilient young men who kept fighting through icy torrents and waves. Most of the deceased were never recovered, and diving near the wreck is totally prohibited by law. I wouldn't disturb it if I were you, it's probably haunted. Number 8. Sultana This riverboat sailed up and down the Mississippi River with cargo between 1863 and 1865, some of the most intense years in American history. Built to facilitate the moving of cotton, it contained cutting-edge technology for the time, which meant increased danger as well. At the conclusion of the Civil War, the boat was being used to transport Union prisoners of war back home from their prisons in the South, as the surrender of Confederate troops meant that it was time to begin bringing all of the survivors home. The ship left St. Louis in April 1865 to head towards Vicksburg, Mississippi and pick up troops to bring them back north. On the 15th, the crew heard reports that Abraham Lincoln had been assassinated and began to spread the news as it traveled downriver. By the time it reached Vicksburg, the ship had sprung a leak in its boiler and was in need of repair. But the news at the time was so intense and the promised reward for transporting a large group of soldiers home was so great that the captain decided to patch the repair rather than putting in a legitimate fix. He was in a great hurry. That, combined with the fact that every prisoner in the area was put on this one steamboat, meant that the boat was overloaded with almost 2,000 people. The ship's decks were sagging, the river was engorged with massive spring flooding, and yet the boat pushed north. That is, until 2 a.m. on April 27th, when the boilers exploded and started an inferno on board the ship. Passengers were already weakened from their time in military prison, and the icy waters of the Mississippi took them under quickly. Over 1,000 people perished, although nearly the same number were saved, either by clinging to half-submerged trees or by being rescued by crews of other nearby boats. Because of the unique nature of the Mississippi River and how it changes course, the wreckage from this disaster has been found under soybean fields in Arkansas, four miles west of Memphis, Tennessee. This is one of a few shipwrecks in history where the remnants were found buried underground away from the water. Wild! Number 7. Qiang Ya This Chinese passenger steamship, like many maritime disasters, was overloaded with passengers as it was retreating from the Communist Army in the Chinese Civil War in 1948. It's hard to know exactly how many people perished in this accident, as records were not very well kept at the time, but it's estimated that at least 3,000 fatalities occurred when the ship struck a mine and exploded. Such is the cost of war when disorganized groups of people desperately flee danger and wind up in even greater danger than before. But this story has a strange twist. The wreck of the boat was actually visible above the waterline as it sat in shallow water. So what did people do? Unlike almost every other shipwreck in history, this one was actually dragged out of the water, its hull was put back together, and it was renamed the Dongfang Hong 8. The ship was refurbished in 1956, even though the pieces of the hull had been ruptured by the underwater mine. I would never have gotten on board the Dongfang Hong 8, though. It had to be haunted. There must be thousands of unsettled spirits inhabiting that ship 
after its previous life and destruction. Recycling damaged ships, even ones that carry ghosts and terrible misfortune, is something the government thought necessary during those years. I'm a little bit scared and very impressed. Have you ever heard strange noises while on board a boat? What were they? Do you think you've been on a haunted ship? Tell me your story in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to The Biggest for more amazing videos just like this one. Number 6. Vasa This old Swedish warship was constructed sometime between 1626 and 1628. It was built on the orders of the Swedish king Gustavus Adolphus. He was very proud of his fancy warship, but it had a problem. Because of the ornate bronze cannons on it, the weight balance was totally off. It had a center of gravity that was dangerously unstable. It cost him quite a pretty penny, but what did he care? He was the king. None of his advisors were willing to speak up and tell him that his prize ship was totally garbage and was not even a little bit seaworthy. He had put so many guns so high up on its decks that when it came time for the maiden voyage of the ship, it suffered a catastrophe. It was supposed to fire a massive salute to the king and was watched by thousands of his subjects. There were even foreign ambassadors there observing on behalf of their kings and queens. Almost immediately upon setting sail from the port, it hit a bit of wind and tipped over. It was a total disaster and a huge embarrassment for the country. The valuables from the ship were recovered in the years that followed, but the ship itself was finally pulled out of the depths in 1961. It is now part of a museum, both as an icon of medieval opulence and foolishness in early engineering. Archaeologists and engineers alike have found it to be a source of fascination today as one of the most shining examples of the Emperor Has No Clothes parable. No one was willing to tell the king that the ship would never sail, and so he suffered an even greater embarrassment when it finally launched and sank. Number 5. M.S. Doña Paz This ship and its associated disaster were once called the Titanic of the Philippines. Though the ship was originally built in 1963 under the Japanese flag, it was sold to a Philippine ship line, and in 1987 it suffered a massive collision with another ship, the Vector. Unfortunately, like with many deadly disasters, the ship was overcrowded, the life jackets were locked away, and the radio for the ship did not work. The crew was also negligent, drinking and watching TV instead of monitoring the situation as the boat moved through the water. The Vector, on the other hand, was an oil tanker that was massively violating safety protocols. It was not seaworthy, had no lookout, and no qualified master on board. Of course, when it collided with the passenger boat, all the oil ignited and created an inferno. Whether it was by drowning under the water or burning in the flaming oil slicks sitting on top of the water, people were doomed from the moment the ships crashed. Over 4,000 people are estimated to have perished in a boat that had three times as many people as it was technically supposed to. Only 26 people were rescued. Sometimes boats in developing nations try to get by without following the proper safety practices, and when disaster strikes, it's extra deadly. Number 4. Queen Anne's Revenge Perhaps the most famous pirate of all time is the legendary Blackbeard. Edward Teach was his real name, and he pillaged and pirated throughout the Caribbean and Atlantic during the early 1700s. His most famous flagship, of course, was the Queen Anne's Revenge, which he used extensively after he commandeered it to capture incredible amounts of treasure. It joined his service in late 1717, when he captured it in the West Indies. For six months, he attacked various merchant ships and stole their cargo. His boldest move? He even refused a royal pardon made by the governor of South Carolina on the condition that he would merely stop pillaging. As the ship began to degrade after so many battles and weeks at sea, it wasn't surprising that Blackbeard decided to run her aground on June 10, 1718. There it lay for centuries until in 1996, a private group discovered its remains. It sits under a mere 28 feet of water near Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. Many artifacts and trinkets have been brought to the surface by teams of divers, including a few valuable old coins. 
they even recovered the ship's anchor. As for old Blackbeard, he died in battle later in 1718, living a life that could only be called as fast and exciting as it was dangerous and villainous. Number 3. RMS Titanic What more needs to be said about this famous shipwreck? It was supposed to be unsinkable when it launched in 1912, and it took a massive iceberg about 385 miles south of Newfoundland to tear a hole in its side and send it to a watery grave. Of the 2,224 people on the ship, only about 700 were rescued and the other 1,500 perished. A great number of safety precautions were not properly followed, as there were enough lifeboats there for many more people to survive, if only they had been properly filled and lowered in time. Unsinkable only applies to ruptures that took out a small number of the chambers in the belly of the ship, apparently. The hulk of the ship was discovered by the U.S. Navy in 1985 and sits in the same place today as it disintegrates more than two miles underwater. Of course, we all know this particular story well because of the blockbuster 1997 film with the same name, which made the events of the construction, sale, and sinking of this ship a household tale. Number 2. Mary Rose King Henry VIII was an iconic monarch of England for a number of years in the late 1400s and early 1500s, and his shipbuilders began working on this vessel in 1510 to help him build up the Royal Navy to create a significant force in the world of sailing for years to come. The ship was a magnificent piece of construction and served in a number of conflicts between England and France. It was even improved in 1536, adding an extra deck on board and increasing its capacity to wage war. Unfortunately, it also sank due to negligence in battle a few years later, in 1545. It was apparently done firing from its cannons on one side when it began to turn around to fire its other armaments. However, as it was turning, a strong gust of wind struck it, pushing it down to the point where water began gushing in through the open gun ports. All the equipment on the ship started falling to one side, crushing crew members and adding to the weight imbalance. The trapped crew members perished, with only 35 of 400 men being rescued. Like many ships of its day, the Mary Rose was not stable under certain conditions, and circumstances caused it to have a deadly accident in the midst of battle. The ship's hull was eventually recovered from the ocean floor in 1982, with countless archaeological discoveries that came with it. From the skeletons of deceased sailors that were still manning the same cannons that they went down with, to salvaged valuables that went into museums, the tragedy that occurred here offers scientists today a unique glimpse into life on a warship in the 16th century. Number 1. Wilhelm Gustloff The day was January 30th, 1945. The German forces were crumbling, hemmed in by advancing American, British, and French soldiers in the West and Soviet soldiers in the East. Their leader, Adolf Hitler, was addressing the Germans by radio. Unfortunately for the poor souls packed onto the cruise liner Wilhelm Gustloff, it was to be the last radio address they would ever hear. Their cruise liner, which had been named after a deceased German soldier several years earlier, had been torpedoed by Soviet submarines and was sinking. It was bitterly cold on the Baltic Sea where the ship was dropping into the water, and the passengers knew that only a few of them would survive. Though this boat was originally designed as an extreme luxury ship for high-ranking officials in the government or wealthy citizens to use to take vacations, on this day it was supposed to be relaying hungry, scared civilians from one side of the Baltic to the other so they could escape the advancing Russian troops. There were about 10,000 people aboard the ship, including 1,000 soldiers and 9,000 civilians. Only about 1,200 of them survived. Because this ship was not moving very quickly, nor was it guarded by any military ships, it was a sitting duck for the Russian sub, which hit it three times with torpedoes before disappearing. A few cruisers rescued some of the passengers, but overall, this was by far the deadliest maritime disaster in history. The shipwreck now sits at the bottom of the Baltic Sea near Poland. It is forbidden to dive near there to look for treasure, but many people agree that there are still valuables hidden down there, waiting to be rescued and recovered. 
Those were nine of the biggest shipwrecks in history. Which was the most interesting in your opinion? Tell me what you think in the comments below, then remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and get excited for more awesome videos. I will see you next time.